Hello everyone and welcome back to Python Lessons on Code Academy. Well, we will be starting this off a little bit differently. I promised last time that we will look at uh, what the functions zip and enumerate do. So let's start off by looking at what zip does. Let's run it. And so, okay, let's explain. We have two lists and zip in a way merges them together but it makes a new list which contains tuples which is another type of variable which I don't really understand how it works but it uh, works similarly to a list but instead of square brackets it uses normal parentheses or normal brackets so you make a new list out of uh, two lists or I'm guessing that you can make it even three lists. So let's see if we make a list called C, which is uh, 0, 9, 8, and oops, sorry, 8, 7, 6, and that's it. Let's run it now. And yes, so it makes a new list uh, depending on how many other lists you have. I don't know what happens if you add a new another one of those so you get um, it finishes at where all of them have uh, elements so if one of the lists or I'm guessing more than one but not all of them have if not all of the lists have the exact sum, same number of elements then it will stop at the common uh, at the lowest number of elements that they have and it will create a new list containing the merged kind of numbers. So now let's see what enumerate does. So let's run this, Oops, just so that it's not confusing, let's close this down first. And let's run it. So from what I can see, uh, enumerate creates a tuple uh, again, and but uh, it takes a list as an argument, so let's actually do this so that it's a bit clearer and enumerate a so uh, it makes a tuple and depending on which index the value is in so in this case a is in index 0 so it starts at 0 and then a and then it makes that a tuple but it doesn't make a list out of it then you have uh, 1, B, so index 1 is B, index 2 is C. At least that's what I understand. So now let's actually move on to our next part with Code Academy. So now that I explained what tube, uh, not tuple, what zip and enumerate do, let's start off with our new Code Academy topic. So in this topic, we will we'll be practicing and trying out what, uh, trying to remember what we have done so far and applying it. Uh, now there will be less hints and uh, minimal instructions, as it says. So let's get started. So let's get started by making a function that uh, checks if something if if a number is even or not. So we need to, if x is divisible by 2, i.e. modulo 2 equals 0, then it should return true. Otherwise, it should return false. Oops, I need to do else. Return false. So, oops, what did I do wrong? Oh, of course, it needs to take an argument. <laughs> it can't just do it without an argument. Good, so that's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure that we've done this somewhere before. Maybe not as a function, but in a program, as a part of a program. So now let's do is int. Define a function called is int, which takes a, an argument x, and have it return true if the number is an integer, as defined above, and false otherwise. So what does it say above? For the purpose of this lesson, we'll also say that a number with a decimal part that is all zeros is also an integer, such as 0. Point, I mean 7.0. Okay, so 
if we divide a number by 1, then the remainder of it, if it is a decimal, will be bigger than 0. Therefore, it should return false. So let's try this. If x modulo uh, 1 the equals 0, then it should return true because therefore it's an integer. Otherwise, it should return false. If I can spell return. There we go. So because we're dividing by 1, if you divide 2.25 by 1, you will have a remainder of well depending no yes if you divide 2.25 by 1 because you're dividing it by a whole number I don't actually know how this would really work out in real life um, so say you because you're dividing by a whole number you won't you uh, there will be a remainder because a decimal place yeah I don't really know how to explain that. If you guys can help me out with explaining this in the comments, then that would be great. Because I don't, I don't know how to explain what I'm thinking for this. So let's move on. Digit sum. Now let's try something a little trickier. Try summing the digits of a number. This is this should be easily done with a string. Write a function called digit sum. Okay, that takes an argument n, right? Yeah. And returns the sum of all the numbers, numbers digits. Okay. So what I will start off by doing is making number to be a string of n the number so that I can use each uh, character in it individually. And because we know that it's a positive integer, then we won't have to worry about adding a, a minus sign. So therefore we shouldn't be getting any errors. Once we have that, we need a counter. So let's just call it counter. Or we can call it output and then equals zero. And then for um, digit in number, we want to add each of the digit in number to our counter. So, therefore, we need to do counter plus equals the digit. And then at the end, we need to return what counter is. I can't type return today. I have no idea why. <laughs> return counter, and let's actually spell that correctly. S let's see if this is correct. No. So, does your digit sum. Oh! Right, we need to, before we add it, we need to convert it to an integer because you can't add a string to an integer. There we go. So let's explain this a bit more in depth. Uh, at first we take an, an integer value into the function. Then we convert this integer value into a string by saying str n. So now we have a string character, which is uh, not a string character, uh, a string, an array of numbers in this case. So then we make a new variable, counter, so that we can put it into output and add all of the digits together. Then we take each digit individually from number and add it onto counter uh, while converted in, converting it into an integer. So that once that finishes, we return counter, which is going to be all of the digits added up. So let's move on. Factorial. So uh, let's try a factorial problem. These are, I know that this should be interesting. Define a function called factorial. So let's do that. Uh, takes an argument x is input. Calcul calculate and return the factorial factorial of that number. So let's do this with range and I will let's try this. So we need to add each previous number to our number. If that makes any sense. And stop at one for n in 
well actually we need to make a variable first so let's call this variable counter previously like previously but in this we'll make it one because we're multiplying and if it's zero then our uh, output is going to be zero so for an in range one starting at one because if we start at zero again we have the same problem uh, as getting uh, zero as our result and then we need to stop at x plus one so that we actually add or multiply x on as well and then we need to make counter the same as well times equals n and then we need to return our result nope I really cannot spell return today okay then <laughs> let's see what her error is um, syntax error for an in range uh, that's what I forgot did you define a function called factorial yes I did did I misspell yes I did misspell factorial okay <laughs> There we go, so that works. So let's explain it a bit more in depth again. So we make, uh, we take in an integer value, then we make our own variable starting at one. Uh, n becomes one and is multiplied by counter, so by one. If, say x is four, then n becomes two, is multiplied by one, so counter becomes two. Uh, then n becomes 3 from because we have range so n becomes 3 3 times 2 is 6 afterwards n becomes 4 4 multiplied by 6 is 24 therefore we get uh, our result as 24 if we run this function with factorial 4 so let's move on to our last task for today um, I was trying to record this video before but I didn't actually manage to find the answer to this so I looked up on the Q&A forums because this is quite a difficult answer so let's define a function called is prime because that's the simple part and then for each number n from 2 to x minus 1 test if x is evenly divisible by n if it is return false if none of them are then return true so uh, the hint was all numbers less than 2 are not prime numbers therefore if x is oops what am i doing if x is less than 2 then return false then we have to make a loop and what confused me here was uh, for each number n from 2 to x minus 1 um, for so let's explain it. n in range then we have 2 to x minus 1 well range already does x minus 1 for us we don't have to do x minus 1 because that's going to be two numbers before x we need to do uh, range 2 uh, comma x and then if it is we need to if okay so let's see um, so if the x is evenly divisible by n uh, then return false and I officially can't spell return <laughs> return false so if it is divisible by x if our number is divisible by another number evenly which isn't uh, one then we know that it's not a prime number now uh, otherwise we need to return true this is also where I got confused because I put this indented into there but it's not supposed to be indented because if we do that then it's go um, on a number that's not divisible it's not going to run this so it's always going to be true so let's save and submit and see if that's correct so yes it is 
Let's actually try to explain this to myself and to you. So let's see. If x is smaller than 2, return false. Because if x is smaller than 2, then it's either 1 or 0. Or less than that, but we're not interested in negative numbers. And it's false, because 1 isn't a prime number or a complicated number. Is that what it is? I don't even know how to English. <laughs> for n in range 2 comma x so we go through all of the numbers between 2 and x excluding x and if x is divisible by any of those numbers then it's not a whole number I mean it's not a prime number so we return false if uh, this loop has been run successfully without anything without anything being returned then it's going to enter the else and return true so if you have any questions please do ask in the comments for those of you do, uh, that are that are asking in the comments thank you and i will be uh, answering your comments as soon as i can so until next time please like comment share subscribe dislike tell me what i can improve and Thanks for watching. Goodbye.